All right, guys, here's a quick video, hopefully quick, to show you how to clean 3D resin prints or how I clean them using rubbing alcohol. I've had videos in the past showing how to clean them with, um, uh, what do I use, simple grain in a, in a, in a, in a um, you know, the, the thing that shakes, the shaky cleaner, the ultrasonic cleaner. But here's a process I've been using lately, um, and I'll show you it right now. This is a print, uh, some prints, some miniatures off of my, from the, 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 the bell rock some of the um, Dragonborns and whatnot, and another, some, some city folk. Uh, so I printed them here on my Sonic my Mini 8K, um, which has insane bed adhesion, so I'm trying to get it off. Um, I haven't, I, the t settings I got for my um, resin I'm using are not right. So, uh, not right, but the base layers aren't right. That's a separate video on how to set your base layers. But um, yeah, the, the 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 mini 8K and the new and the new mighty 8K have this have them fancier designs on their on their um, on their on their beds, their plates, and it really makes the stuff stick. Like it just broke off a bunch of supports. I'm alright, didn't hurt the model, but it's not what I'm trying to do here. It's just like yeah, I had seen a few videos on this printer having a crazy um, bed, but like um, or print plate um, plate. See that it's. I tried to scratch it up to give it a little bit of roughness, but it's got this like like laser engraved like hex pattern on there. Anyway, uh, that's not making this a quick video, so let's make this a quick video. I'll show you how to clean these prints. So take them off your build plate the best you can, and then wipe your build plate down. Uh, like I see, I broke some pieces off, so that's a real important. Uh, I see videos where people just like wipe the bottom of the bill plate and throw it back in. You really got to wipe your bill plate down, if you, especially if you break supports or something that, like that, because you really want to make sure that you didn't, and you're not putting any pieces of broken, um, broken uh, model or, or supports back in your vat, because it'll get stuck and they can puncture, they can puncture your fap or you know cause all all different kinds of problems. So you really want to go around and give it a good 360 degree wipe down. Um, in fact. Sometimes if there's stuff stuck, I'll give a little bit of, um, this is like 99, 99 or 91% IPA. Got a little squirt bottle, put it here. Just so, just so it's nice and clean. All right, so I'll put that back there. And let's put the lid back on this thing. Hence, before we forget, perfect, all right. And now, <laughs> and we'll wipe off our spatula, I'll show you how I clean these prints with IPA. Um, I use a three uh, bucket or pickle jar system. I'm putting these, these napkins here because, or, or these paper towels here because when I'm done, I'm gonna use this UV flashlight that I got on Amazon for like 10 or 12 bucks to cure these before I throw them in the trash. So I'll put these over here, put that there. It's super simple. So I take my, take my um, prints here. These are the prints, the figures, some of the sports I broke. Um, I'm gonna take my sports off last. I'll make a video on, those, on that later because I'm a new system for that. But what I like to do, I have these three pickle jars that I got off of Amazon. Um, I got them during the pandemic, so they were like 14 or 15 bucks each. Now you can find them for like nine to 12. And I've numbered them with a Sharpie, one, two, three. Um, and the numbers kind of come off because sometimes the IPA, IPA spills onto them and it needs the numbers off. So this is 99% um, IPA that I got. Um, actually, I got a big batch of it towards the end of the pandemic and then it, uh, it got cheaper now. So unless you live in Canada, getting IPA isn't as expensive as it used to be. Uh, a couple, you know, a year ago or so. So basically what I have here, if you can see, I have three different pickle jars of IPA. I have a dirtier one, a cleaner one, and a pretty clean one, or, or mostly clean one. And basically what you do, like you've seen in the videos, I, I'm gonna dunk them in here, I'm gonna clean them in here, and then I'm gonna clean them in here, then I'm gonna let them dry overnight, and then I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, you know, I'll have, I'll have clean prints. And then I'm gonna use hot water the following day after they dry overnight to take off the supports. So. Real easy, get your little tray. It's just a tray from the dollar store or the towel that I drop in here, the shop towel. I'm gonna drop my guys in. Do it carefully so you don't splash all over yourself and get toxic resin on yourself like I have before, which is gross and itchy, to be honest. <laughs> and then put this to the side. And then I don't know if the camera's back enough. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it, okay. And then I'm just gonna agitate this. The first one, people call this different stuff like your trash water, your hobo water. Your, your, your gross water, or, or not water, but like IPA. It's the first like trash bath. It's just your first bath can be kind of dirty IPA. Not too dirty, but this is dirty uh, enough because you're just trying to wash off. A lot of um, residue will come off, honestly, the, on the first first dunk. Like if you're gonna use a washing cure, which I'll make a video on in the future, 
I would give them at least, your, your prints at least a dunk in something like water, like or IPA like this, and then put them in your wash and cure so you don't make your, your, your wash and cure IPAs really dirty. But that's the idea here. That's where you go dirty, less dirty clean. So do it in here. Um, you can do it for like a minute or so. I'm not wearing a respirator, but I highly recommend going on Amazon for 10 or 15 bucks or 15 or 20 bucks and getting one of those respirators with little rechangeable cartridges because breathing an IPA burns the heck out of your nose and it's probably not doing great things to me right now, but I'm not wearing the respirator right now because I'm, I'm making a video, but I assure you, I normally do wear it and it's not because, well, I am kind of a wimp and a baby, but also because it's just like, then my nose isn't burned out for like the next 36 hours. I don't have a headache from doing this, but because I'm making a video, I'm doing this without a respirator. So I'll put a link in the description to a respirator that you can get. I'll put a link in the description to the little flashlight too, so you can cure your stuff on your tabletop after you're done so you don't litter toxic stuff in the trash. But same thing, like this. Um, I'm doing the shorter version, but yeah, you can do this for like 30 seconds to a minute. People um, say, and it's true, that IPA can attack resin and make it eat, eat, eat away at it. So you don't wanna leave these in here overnight. You wanna do like 30 seconds in this, and then a minute or two in this, and then a minute or two in this. Because that's basically, if you watch um, videos of people who have wash and cure stations, it's kind of the same thing. A wash and cure people will put in from three to five minutes. So we're doing like a minute or two in here, a minute or two in here, a minute or two in here. That's about you know five to six minutes total. It's about the same thing. But yeah, uh, like the wash and cure stations, you wanna agitate a little bit if you can. Help stir it around. Also, if you want on the second bath, um, even on the first sometimes, you can um, wear gloves, these are nitro gloves. You can go in and grab the guys if you have intricate stuff. These are just these are just like like real simple minis, but you can go in with a soft toothbrush from the dollar store, dip in your IPA, and actually scrub your fingers a little bit if you wanna make sure that they're extra clean. But um, do it in your first or second bath. Don't do it in your final wash, because if you do, you're gonna crud up your thing, your, uh, your, your, your good IPA. Um, so here's what I like to say. If you notice, between this one and this one and this one, I like to take them out of the bucket and I like to dump them out here to get the excess like this first one, I got the excess gross IPA off and I put them in this and I got the excess, same thing. I'm just kind of like give them a, little, a quick little jostle on here to get, ah, oh no, this guy fell in. Um, that was unexpected and I wanted, anyway, to give them a quick little jostle without throwing them in like I just did um, to get some, get the get the sloppier IPA off. And then the final rinse, put them in the, in the better and the clean IPA. Um, and after, you know, and do the same thing for a minute or two on these. Do, do, do. All right, let's get this going. And same thing, just, I'm doing this shorter times. Yeah, I would say, you know, a minute in here, two minutes in here, two minutes in here, but I'm just doing a short version so you see what it looks like. Um, I talked to a guy on this uh, earlier this week on, on Facebook, his name is Alex. I think he's in Canada. He runs a uh, print farm up there of like, you know, dozens of, but it looks like from the pictures online of dozens of printers. And I asked him his workflow because he uses just a, a, a cure, uh, he used, mentholated spirits and at wash and cure station. But I asked him if he could use IPA for a system. He said, yeah, and I said, well, I'm doing a three bucket system with this and I'm gonna switch to wash and cure later. And he said, yeah, the system that I'm using now is what he used to use before he went to wash and cure and went to use some mentholated spirits because um, 99 or 70% or above or 91 or 99% IPA is really expensive in Canada apparently. So anyway, a couple minutes in here, a little side note. But he, he said the trick was whatever you, after you wash in the IPA, the trick is Dump your miniatures out into something and then let them dry overnight. See how there's IPA in these? I put these like, you know, face down or on their side. So so no IPA is gonna sit there and eat a hole through them. And again, you can give them a jostle. Also, and I've got one of these somewhere. You can get an airbrush, like a battery powered airbrush, like a junkier one, and you can use, and these guys are stuck together. I'm gonna separate them real quick. You can use an airbrush to blow these off as well if you want and let them sit overnight. But, but Alex said that the, um, and I believe him because I've tried it, the big tip is to let these dry overnight. Even though it's, they're in IPA, let these settle. If you don't want to do direct sun, you know, direct light, get the lid of something and put it kind of askew to block it and then put it under, you know, a cabinet or a counter in your garage where they're not gonna be in direct sunlight. But let these dry overnight. And then uh, the next morning, what you want to do is um, take these with the sports, get some hot water, put hot water in like a Tupperware container like this, dip your minis in there for about 15 or 20 seconds, then these, these, like the previous video I made, these supports will peel right off. Put your supports in this in, 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 a, in a side thing, cure them with a flashlight, and then this the water that you used to dip them in, cure that water with a flashlight, and it's gonna kill all the kill whatever residue of resin you have too, just to make sure so you can dump that water out and feel safe about the environment. Anyway, that's what you do. One, two, three, and then let them dry overnight. Then if they have supports, um, and even if they don't, I'd still wash them off the next morning just to, just to be safe, why not? Wash them off in hot water, take the supports off. Not burning hot, but between warm and hot, like 
like warm like a jacuzzi, but not warm like boiling water, obviously. And then um, peel your sports off and then let those, and then Alex said he also lets those dry overnight one more time and then he cures them on the, thir on the third day or the third morning. So that's just a little thing, uh, my workflow that I'm currently using for using IPA. Um, and just be careful because IPA is super flammable. That's why these, these are great because these pickle jars, and I'll put a link in the description, have a gasket on it. I've been using these for over a year and they're still very tight. I, I don't think they're like liquid tight enough to shake. I don't, I don't shake the parts when they're in them because that's a recipe for splashing IPA all over yourself and resin and blinding yourself. Um, but yeah, I, keep, I store these under my little workbench and they're, they're nice and tight enough where I don't feel like they're, they're a fire hazard that's gonna blow my house up. But this stuff is super flammable, so don't put them by your hot water heater or open flame or any type of electrical stuff that has sparks. You know what I mean? Like, just be careful of this stuff. It's super flammable. But uh, yeah, that's it. And like I said, when you're done, uh, put all your stuff away and then just use a UV flashlight to... to I, I After I put all my prints away to store them, I hit my whole workstation and everything in my gloves with the, and, the, and the towels with the UV flashlight because then I'm not making any waste. Um, you know, any, any toxic waste and just throwing away cured resin. All right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them in one to 375 days because that's how <laughs> I channel. Sometimes I'll find comments from over a year ago. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see this comment or question, but uh, I'll try and answer it. So thank you very much and be sure to subscribe.